Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, we'll be looking at the Star 5. This is the Vision 5 II, a RISC 5 computer. So it is a uh, single board computer that's manufactured by Star 5. It is a follow on to their uh, Vision 5 version 1, which is now referred to as version 1. So it is, a, uh, it is a platform that is based on their chip called the JH7110, and that is a U74 platform. Who is this for? Well, it's for general purpose embedded computing. It is for industrial applications. It's for IoT. It's for high-performance real-time embedded apps. It's for automobile. It has a very strong vision component in it. And it's similar to performance to the ARM Cortex-54. One of the things that, that they have done with this one over the previous version is they doubled the number of cores. The previous version had dual cores. This one is a quad core. So I, to me, this is the first practical uh, development machine that you can get your hands on. It... Uh, it is a 64-bit RISC-V architecture, and it operates at 1.5 gigahertz with a 2 megabyte L2 cache. This one, unlike its predecessor, also has a GPU called the Imagination. And I don't know who comes up with these names, but it is a BXE-4-32MC1 GPU. Default, it'll operate at 400 megahertz, and it can peak up to 600 megahertz for short periods of time. Yeah, I can hear you chuckling. In this class of machine, uh, this is, is, is a serious GPU for this class of a box. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't cost anywhere near what your GPU costs. They do offer it in memory options of 2 gig, 4 gig, and 8 gig, that, and the memory operates at around 2,800 megabits per second. But I have not seen any offerings for the 2 gig lately on the Vision 2 board. So I don't know if they are just having a hard time getting parts like everybody else is, or maybe they've discontinued the model because most people are going for the 4 gig or the 8 gig. Four USB 3.0 connections, and that's different than the previous board, which had two USB 2 and two USB 4. And there's also a USB-C that is used as a power delivery or a PD option. That will support 5 volts up to uh, 30 watts. So some of the PD options today handle 12 volts all the way up to, uh, I don't know, some ungodly number of watts, 100 and, 100 and some plus watts. But this one is designed to handle 5 volt, 30 watts. You'll notice that there are two cans for the uh, RJ45s, and those are next to the HDMI port. They support speeds. Both of them work, by the way. Uh, in this uh, variant of the uh, Linux version, and those both support one gig uh, per second uh, operations over the LAN. There's uh, also an HDMI port that is version 2.0 that supports both 1080p and 4K. Now their specs say 60 frames per second for both, and then there's a, a caveat in the bottom of the manual that says if you're running H.264, Yes, you get 60 frames per second on, on 1080p, but 4K, maybe 30 frames per second. And uh, they don't say what the spec is for H.265. There is a Wi-Fi option that you can purchase for the board. However, I will tell you, my board came with this. This is a Wi-Fi, that's the antenna. And there's also a SMC, I think that's a nano connector. It's one of those ones that will just frustrate the heck out of you trying to get something on it. But yeah, you can attach an external antenna to this as well. I don't know if this supports Bluetooth. I'm only seeing one processing chip. So I think this is just Wi-Fi, but I don't know. I haven't used it. I don't use Wi-Fi. <laughs> I try to avoid Wi-Fi whenever possible. On the back of the board, there are three storage options. In the top corner, there's an SD card reader. And that is spring-loaded, by the way, which I really like. I mean, it's easier to get SD cards in and out when they're spring-loaded. Uh, there's also a eMMC uh, set of connectors. There's two dual connectors there on the board. It, I have not seen anything offered by Star 5 yet, but I'm sure it's probably on their roadmap to do it. There's also a M.2 NVMe connector that supports... Uh, the full NVMe spec. However, it'll support devices up to 2280, but uh, it is only a 1 by PCIe 
Front of the board, there are some pins that are next to the LED displays. Those are used to control which of those uh, three options and, and a fourth one, which is the URT. So you have uh, QSPI for, nor flash, and you also have uh, SDIO, which of course is for the uh, SD card, EMMC, of course, for the EMC device, and then UART if you are, if you are configured for serial. Uh, most, most people that are doing debugging on the board go with, Q, uh, go with UART today. It's just simpler and instead of trying to get networking work in and all that stuff. It's good to have a console. There is, on the, on the top part of the board, there is a four-pin header, and you're probably looking at it going, what in the world is that for? That is a PoE hat that allows power over Internet. So currently, I did not see that hat offered. So again, it's probably on the roadmap of something to further develop. Or maybe third parties will do that over time. There are temp sensors on the board, and you can read those. Glances does handle it. I've only seen one sensor so far. Um, normally, there are sensors for each CPU core, but uh, I don't know if it's just not enabled in the kernel or what. I haven't gotten that far. I've had all of one day to, to learn this, so I've been playing with it quite a bit uh, yesterday and today. Temperature on the board uh, spikes at 85 uh, C or 85 Celsius. Once you get it above that, I'm assuming it shuts down. I haven't tested it that far, but that would be starting to do damage to the CPU and the components on the board above that. So um, I noticed that I did try to run this without cooling for a while. It gets extremely hot. Uh, just doing basic operations with, um, with just doing uh, normal stuff, it was getting up 65 C easy. So, and I did notice it was throttling, starting to throttle back the CPUs at that temperature. So I would recommend some sort of cooling solution. I just went out and got those, you know, those, I had a set that was in a drawer that, uh, where you can they have kind of a sticky on the back, a thermal sticky, and you can stick it on top of, and then I have a fan that's blowing across it. Right now it's about 37 degrees C when it's idle. So yeah, I've got a lot more headroom back. It was idling at about 50 C uh, before. So yeah, a cooling solution is advised. There's also a two-pin fan header, uh, which supports a five-volt fan. There is a MIPI CSI connector for your camera. Uh, there is a 40-pin GPIO connector, and the pinout for that is in the manual. Uh, they, they actually have some really good documentation. I didn't see any for two gig, so I don't know what the prices would be. Uh, I, I don't know if they pulled them. They're just not available. I just don't know. Uh, but the 4 gig is available for, in the U.S. here uh, from Ameridroid at $87.95 USD. And then the 8 gig is $114.95 USD, and that's also from uh, uh, Ameridroid. And those prices are current as of yesterday. What can you run on it? What kind of operating system support does this have? Well, there's a community version for Arch. Uh, they have taken the Debian kernel, and uh, they're currently using that. Uh, you can find some information about that on the RV spaces. Debian, of course, uh, Bookworm is based on SID. That is an engineering release, and Star 5 has both uh, two versions. One is for uh, 55, which was their initial support for the version 2 board that came out during the kickstart. They released 69, I think, about three or four weeks ago. And uh, that is the current board support for the one that's currently being uh, shipped right now. It will work on the other board, however, I understand. But you do have some things you need to do. So read the forums, read the manual. There's some information there that you'll need to know about. Fedora 37 has an engineering release. And we'll talk about what engineering release means. Uh, also, uh, I saw some notes about Ubuntu having 2204.1 support for the board, but I went out and looked at their link that they had in, on the forum, and it, it did not say Vision 2, it said Vision 1. OpenSUSE has uh, Tumbleweed, there's a community image for that, and in all of these, you will need to uh, update your uh, OSPI and your U-boot uh, partitions, which are part of the MTD. The blue line is the Vision 5 2, the green line is the Raspberry Pi uh, excuse me, <laughs> it's like an average, a Raspberry Pi 4, and both of them are 4-core, both of them are 8-gig are, uh, uh, eight of memory. So the other thing about the uh, Pi is it runs at 1.8 gigahertz, so you would think in some instances it would outperform the Vision Tech, and in fact, it does. 
in some areas. They kind of seesaw back and forth, like you'll see, like on dry stones. Man, that thing is really quick on doing integer arithmetic. But then it, it starts to get into other areas, and yeah, not so good. Uh, some of the times it runs worse than the Raspberry Pi. This is single core. These are all single core factors here. Uh, this is multi-core, so this is running with all four cores up and running. And uh, you'll see the same kind of pattern here where some of them run really well and some of them don't. Uh, and so I thought, okay, well, I'll add them all up and then I'll average them and we'll see what we get. Uh, I didn't place any weights on them because to me they're all important, right? They're all important, so I don't weight any of them. So this is without weighting and you'll see that, <laughs> no pun intended, this is, uh, uh, they're pretty much 100% match dead even. So, um that's what I have found, at least in the Unix benchmarks, which test a lot of the functionality of the kernel, which is kind of what you would expect. I mean, 0.18 is not all that much of a change from 0.15, unless unless the Vision Tech, uh, the Vision 5 is, yeah, unless it's downclocking the CPU. And last night when I first ran these, let me tell you, it was downclocking like crazy. So my experience with this is oh, I've worked in the early versions of the Pine64, uh, and I've also worked with the Odroid, uh, at least as, as more of a person that just sent in bug reports when I found them. Uh, and that's basically it. I mean, I didn't do any development on either one. I just kind of acted like a, a dumb tester. And if I found something, I told them about it. And then and went on from there. But I paid attention to what they were doing. Um, and the, typically there's this, uh, there's kind of this curve where when you first get into a project, there's this huge ramp up, right? Where everybody will be jumping on the, uh, trying to get things working and trying to get the drivers and trying to get the kernel compiled and get the environments up and running. And so that's the critical piece. And usually it'll be, you know, a handful of people that are do, working on that. In the meantime, there's a bunch of other people, if it hasn't been done, are starting to work on the packages to get those compiled. Yeah, so it's going to take some time, and that's typical of uh, open source projects. You, you have to be patient. I noticed a few people were, you know, they were getting a little irate with the developers, but, you know, at this stage in the game, there are three phases to development. I think I've talked about this before. Crawl, walk, and run. They're, this is in the crawl phase. I mean, they're just trying to get things to work. They don't even care if they if they work well. They just want to get them to work because there's a lot of things that aren't working at this stage. Once you get to a reasonable number of things to work, you can start tuning and worrying about performance and, and making things better, making things quicker, but you don't worry about performance right away. The release of the, of, of the board uh, from the official release, I think from where it is, and considering it's, it, you know, it's been what, uh, since October, November, to, yeah, five months, six months almost, it's come a pretty long way in, in that time frame. It's come a long way. There's a lot of things working. There's still a lot of things that aren't. Is this a Raspberry Pi killer? Well, first of all, I don't even know what that means because, first of all, you can't get a Raspberry Pi. Second, the Raspberry Pi has a completely different focus. It is meant for entry-level makers and for educators to teach kids about how to program and how to build things and how to make things using a very inexpensive processor. So is this a kill? No, it's just a another tool on the shelf of something else you can use. Uh, I'll play this for you. This is Linus being asked the question about what's his favorite architecture. Do you have a favorite architecture? Uh, it turns out... The instruction set and the core of the CPU is not very important. And, and it's one of those big differentiating factors that people kind of fixate on, but it really doesn't matter very much in the end. What matters is all the infrastructure around that instruction set. And uh, an x86 right now has all that infrastructure, and it has it at a lot of different levels. So Linus says, so in the short form, Linus says, it doesn't matter what chipset you use. What matters is, what, it, what matters to you? What do you like? What do you want to use? Because 
It's the choices you make that make something popular. And that's the reason why x86 is here today. It's, it's because so many people use it, it's not going to go away. It's not going to disappear, not, not in any, any amount of time that, uh, that anybody would care about. So these other platforms will allow you to enter new markets. That's why I've always looked at it, is you have ARM for the phone. Is Risk Five for the IoT? Is it for, can it do small home labs for development? Yes, I think so. Can it, can it support small networks at home? Can I build a NAS on it? Can I build a, a security architecture for my network? Absolutely you can. <laughs> Finally, the last question is, will it run crisis? I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. That's all I had. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you again real soon. Bye for now.